All right, so I'm going to go through the process to install uh, NASA CEA on Mac OS. This is uh, version 10.8, but this should work for any version of Mac OS uh, where you have the proper G4Train GCC compiler libraries installed. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is go to the App Store and download Xcode, which is this application right here. Xcode includes the compilers that we're going to be needing to use. Uh, it's a fairly large download because it also includes a nice IDE for doing development in both OS X and iOS. Uh, if you're a programmer, you probably already have this on your Mac. If not, I recommend you get it if you're an engineer. It's a good thing to have. Uh, Xcode is free, and so just uh, hit the install button and, uh, and download and install it. You can see I already have it here. So once you have Xcode, we're not going to be using it directly. We're going to need to be using the Xcode command line tools. Uh, which you can get from the Apple uh, developer website, which is developer.apple.com slash downloads. And once you're there, uh, if you just search for command line over here on the left-hand side, you can download the command line tools for Xcode, which is this package right here. Uh, it's another 100 megabyte uh, disk image you need to download and install. So uh, once that's installed, uh, you can run uh, basically Unix-style uh, development tools from the terminal, uh, which is what we're going to be doing here for the rest of the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, download CEA, and you can get that from the NASA website. Uh, once you have that in your downloads folder, you should download three uh, zip files. Uh, there's uh, the Fortran uh, files that we're going to need to be compiling. There's the executable for Mac and also the GUI uh, for CEA. If you're trying to install CEA on another Darwin kernel, um, or any other uh, Linux kernel, you can do that as well. Uh, you won't need the executable file. Uh, if you're doing this for Windows, you can also uh, download There's a, a Windows executable uh, file that's available on the NASA website as well. So the first thing to do is we're going to copy all these to a new uh, application folder. You can put it anywhere you want. I'll go ahead and put it in applications here, and we'll name this folder NASA CEA, or whatever you wish to name it. Copy the files over into the NASA CEA folder, and then we're done with the downloads folder, so I'll go ahead and close that. All right, so once we've got the files copied over into the working directory that we're going to be using, we go ahead and open up a terminal window. And uh, here we're going to be uh, unzipping the files and then updating their permissions and then uh, recompiling them for our current operating system. So first, move over to the application directory that we just created. And there's the three files that we made. And the first thing to do is to unzip these. We'll use zcat and tar to do that. All right, so now we have all three of those zip files unpacked. And we need to check to make sure that the appropriate files are there and also that they have the right permissions. So we can see that we have uh, CEA GUI, FCEA2, B1, B2, B3, uh, and then two library files, thermo.live, trans.live, and finally syntax. Those are the six files that we need to check to make sure that we have. We're going to rebuild a few of those so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, those are going to come from syntax.f, the input files here, thermo and trans, uh, as well as uh, b1, b2, b3, cea2, and uh, that should do it. So now that we have those files uh, unzipped and ready to go, we can go ahead and uh, update their permissions. If you have uh, this permission set here, uh, where you can execute the files, you should be in good shape, but just in case, we'll go ahead and add uh, everybody to the executable group. Um, so we'll do this uh, using the chmod command. And uh, that should update all the permissions to where they need to be. So now that we have the permissions updated, uh, the next thing to do, we're going to need to add the CEA installation directory to our path variable. And that way the Java application GUI knows where to find CEA. And also you can call CEA from anywhere in your system if you want to. Uh, which makes it very, very convenient to run. So to do that, we're going to need to open up a super user terminal um, and then whatever text editor you want to use to do this. And uh, sign in. And then jump down to the end of the file here and we'll go ahead and add the directory that we created. So to the path variable and then save the file and then uh, restart your shell 
and uh, you should be all set. So the next thing to do is to recompile the CEA files that we're going to be using for the current version of the kernel that we're working in. And to do that, we're going to use GFortran, which is the compiler that we downloaded when we installed Xcode. Uh, so the first one to do is CEA2. I'll do that in verbose mode so you can see it. And you can see that it compiled uh, here with no errors for our current OSX version and our current version of the Darwin kernel, uh, which is this guy here, or you can see it further up as well. Right there, there's the target to build to. Uh, so we also need to update... Um, well, first we need to move that output file to FCEA2, since that's the CEA application that we just built. Like so. And then we'll also do that for B1, B2, B3. And now we have our files ready to go here. So uh, finally, we need to make our new library file so that uh, CEA can access them in a format that's familiar to it. And so to do that, we actually use the CEA application. It's capable of, uh, of doing that for itself. So to do that, we'll just start CEA by typing FCEA2. And it asks for the input file here. And the first one we'll do is the transport properties. We'll also do that for the thermal properties here. And for the record, if you need to update the transport properties or the thermal property libraries, uh, you can do that by updating the input files. Um, that's just these guys here. Uh, for instance, this is a thermo file, and it gives you all the information up on top, the order of the species you need to update, and then the data files for pretty much everything there. You can see there's an electron. There is uh, what, AG is silver, uh, aluminum, et cetera, et cetera. So. All right, so now we should be set to run CEA, and to do that, uh, if you want to start the GUI, uh, just call the CEA shell script here, which is run CEA, and there's the CEA GUI, and we're all set. CEA is happy and ready to run. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, good luck, and uh, enjoy the application.